Welcome everyone to another chat with Shani. Today we have a very special guest with us. This is my dear friend Priscilla who I met while I was living in Dublin. Priscilla will be discussing Dublin with us and her experiences while living here as well as all the amazing trips that she's been on and the awesome friends that she's met. So Priscilla, welcome to Chats with Shani. Please tell us where you are currently, what you're doing and how life is. Thanks, Janelle, for having me. Um, yeah, so um, I'm in Paris right now. I'm working from home and um, I'm a financial accountant for one of the um, Irish whiskey companies. Um, no need to promote them right now. <laughs> but for well-known brands. And um, yeah, life is great. Life, life is wonderful. And I think we're just embracing, you know, this moment, even though the pandemic is, you know, holding us back a little bit. But yeah. So Priscilla, you said that you are home in France. Is France yeah. home or what is going on? Uh, <laughs> South Africa is still my home. South Africa is still like my number one home. But France is my home for now, you know, just this present moment. Um, I have families here from, you know, my maternal families over here and just, you know, spending time with them saving money on rent because you know how crazy rent is in Dublin yeah, so know. it's just yeah inverted commas <laughs> <laughs> so Priscilla tell us how did this opportunity arise to work in Dublin um, how long have you been living and working in Dublin and why did you choose Dublin over any other country that might have been an opportunity at the time so uh, Dublin was very, Dublin Ireland was very random, okay, like geographically I didn't even know the difference between Ireland and Northern Ireland, so it was not even on my radar, not on my list, you know, um, so uh, a recruiter randomly just, you know, sent me a message saying, there's opportunities in Dublin, what do you think about this, and at the time I was going to the US, and I thought, well, actually, I could try out Ireland, right? And then I started doing more research in Ireland. Then I realized, you know, there's actually more to Ireland than, you know, what we know. We usually associate yeah. it with the UK. So then I thought, well, I'd really love to explore Ireland a little bit, explore the Irish people. And then I also started thinking, well, it's actually in Europe, right? So this, it's proximities to like a lot of other countries, countries I'd love to discover. Um, and yeah, that's how I went about um, Ireland. But uh, other countries would have been nice as well. But then uh, I'm more about travels, like you know me. I'm like pro traveling, travel for family, travel per for personal entertainment, personal experiences. So then I thought being in Europe would just allow me to travel a lot more and see a lot more in comparison to other countries. So yeah. That's and how it. long have you been in Dublin for? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to answer that one. <laughs> I've been in, I've been in Ireland for three years now, just over three years. Um, yeah, so I worked, I started working for an audit company, then I moved on to, you know, my current role right now. So I've done two different jobs in Ireland. I'm proud. And one thing that the viewers need to know is that getting into Ireland, you do need a work permit and that work permit is associated with a particular company. After mm -hmm. two years, you're able to get a stamp for visa, um, which means that you no longer have to work with the company that gave you the work permit. You can work and live in Ireland with any company. Or you don't even have to like work, you can just live in Ireland, but obviously you need money. But you can exactly. transfer from your previous employment to any other company, which is exactly what Priscilla did. And now she's living yep. a good life. <laughs> outside You're of audit. Right, man. <laughs> <laughs> like we, we're not about those hours, like those long working <laughs> hours. No, I've done enough of them. I, yeah. you know what, I appreciate them, but I'm done. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm okay no. now. <laughs> no, that, I mean, and that's exactly what Priscilla and I met. We met at work and we, it was very really unexpected though, but we had a beautiful relationship which ended in yep. us 
going to Poland together as well as mm. me living with Priscilla for like two weeks in December. Yeah. <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> which was loads of fun. Priscilla was watching Korean dramas with me. Well, she, no, she was watching me watch Korean dramas. <laughs> Yes, that's, that's the narrative. Not that I was watching with you, no. <laughs> Don't mislead them right now. <laughs> Listen, K-dramas for the win. <laughs> Priscilla, tell us, so you've been living in Dublin for two or three years. You're in and out of France as well. Um, you've been out of South Africa. What has your lifestyle been like since you've left South Africa? How has it changed? What's your work-life balance like? And what's your quality of life like? Oh, I'd say a lot has changed because like I'm from Johannesburg, right? And uh, I've, I'd say safety has been the number one thing that has changed for me, you know? And now I just roam, you know, the middle of the street at 1 a.m. I don't even think about it. Like, you know, it, it's so crazy. I've, I've just become so accustomed to being safe and feeling safe. Mm-hmm. And I'd say that is the one thing that I uphold and I would always speak highly of. And um, I needed to get used to being without family, yeah. which is a little bit strange. Like you would know, you and I come from big families, you know, with a lot of siblings. And yeah. now it's just like, I'm on my own can I do this, you know? (laughs) And so there was that bit. Um, I would say quality of life has changed a lot for me in a sense that now everything that I dreamt about, I can do. So I dreamt of traveling constantly. Like, you know, you would know me. I would would have a whole Excel spreadsheet of which cities I'd like to travel over the weekend and I'll make it a weekend trip. You know, as opposed to when I was in South Africa, I had to like plan out a month in advance, not a month, sorry, a year in advance. A year in advance, yeah. Yeah, and so yeah, I'd say life has changed a lot for me for the good and also, you know, some bad bits. So um, yeah, it's been, it's been a journey, you know. <laughs> the bad bits is like, you know, missing laughing. family. <laughs> I'm only laughing because I know about the bad bits. But we, we, it's, it's things we all go through and it's things that we have friends for to help us through, which we've had each other and we've had other friends as well yeah. who have helped us through those things. Um, you spoke a lot about the fact that you love traveling. Now, mm. I know that this woman has been <laughs> almost everywhere and she's been to Italy a few times. So I love Italy. <laughs> Listen, girl, that place will always have a special place right here. <laughs> oh. Dude, I want to retire there. Like, I should probably not even say I, this out loud. I'm not. going to. Like, they must just understand. I'm going to grow old in Italy, in Lake Como. And I'm going to go to Venice on weekends and just live my best life. <laughs> the life, you know. Oh, the pasta and pizza life. <laughs> no, I've had the best margarita pizza and it was the best pizza I've ever had in my life was in Italy. And it was the oh most basic God. ever. And I was just like, why does it taste so good? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but back to the travels. Let's not get too roped up in Italy. How many countries have you been to? That's if you know the number, because I know it's been many. And how easy was it for you to travel from Ireland to these other countries? And what was like the average cost like? Um, okay, so I've been to over 25 countries, you know, since moving into Dublin, Ireland. Um, so I've traveled just over 25. I've traveled over 60 cities. Like you said, I'd go to certain countries more than once because I just yes. loved it so much. And uh, oof, the experience. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. You really get stunned. I'll tell you like, you read about it on Google and then you experience it. Two different things. Yeah, way, you know, way different. Two different things. Uh, how easy was it to travel? The greatest thing about traveling within Europe is that, you know, you apply for a Schengen visa and that, you know, gets you eligible to travel all the Schengen air, all the countries within the Sharon. Um, Schengen areas and uh, so that's the one greatest thing and then there's another thing where other European countries that are not part of the Schengen area 
recognize the Schengen visa. So you still travel with the one visa. So that is how easy it has been. And in terms of costs, I mean, it depends. You know what I mean? Like certain cities are a lot more cheaper. Like um, I'd say Italy is a lot more cheaper than Ireland, for example, to travel around that. Um, you know, East Europe as well. But then you go Northern Europe and yeah, you could get broke within a weekend. It's just, that is true. yeah, take your savings with you. <laughs> That's how expensive <laughs> it is. I mean, just go to Spain, go to Italy, go to all these glamorous countries that we all know about and just save money. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? But um, I would say it, it's planning, you know, planning makes life a lot more cheaper for you, a lot more affordable, maybe not cheaper, let's say affordable. And um that is the, that's the thing. Hence, I spoke about my Excel spreadsheet. You know, I'd be like, mm-hmm. what is our budget for friends? Okay, this is this much, this is that much. And I used to purchase my flights way in advance, you know, because mm, that's very smart. It, it, you know, it's, it's a lot cheaper as well. And book my accommodation perhaps two months in advance to traveling as well. That also makes it cheaper. Mm. Um, you know, so there was a lot of that. Did a lot of research into what to try, well, like where to go to, how to do it, and that allows you to fall into packages. There's certain packages that you know, you know, tourism companies would have, and those are actually like life changing, like things you wouldn't think of, you know. And you know, they'll be like, if you do all these three things, you have a fifty euros discount. Fifty euros discount is a lot, fam. Like, That's it's huge. Money. You know, let the 50 not, let it not, you know, make. You know, Just because it looks like a small strain. number doesn't mean it is a small number. You know what I mean? 50 is a lot. Like, oh, I couldn't do my groceries with 50 euros. Yeah, I wouldn't even buy clothes. That's 50 euros. You know, honestly. <laughs> Pennies for the win. <laughs> no, I completely no. and truly agree with you. And also another thing that I really like about Europe is that you have these travel cards that allows you so you purchase this travel card and it let's say it could be like 30 euros 40 euros but it allows you to go to various amount of attractions for free or you exactly. buy a transport ticket let's say for three days because europe knows they have so many tourists so they make these things available <coughs> to them so you can buy yeah. a 24 a 30 a 36 72 hour travel ticket which means that you can swipe on and swipe off the bus the tram the train multiple yep times during that period of time which also saves you a lot of money instead of like buying a ticket every time you want to go and travel yeah so that is so you gotta plan it awesome. yes and you need to research 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 don't just travel research things in the country and where you can where there's possible cost savings as well yeah and just to add now like you know these countries they know this because there was a package that i took that included Budapest, Vienna, and um, what's the other one? Bratislava. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's, they, they all know this. So like, if a person is going through our country to, you know, as tourism, they pass through all these, you know, bigger countries, you know, and I mean, cities, sorry, not countries. And uh, those are, you know, it, it's, you need to know this. You need to Google this. You need to, you know, research this. And Bratislava to uh, Vienna was like a bus was five euros. I just wanted to throw that out there to let. Oh you my know word! <laughs> I, so, I can freaking buy a leap card. So the leap card is a transport card here in Ireland that cost five euros. Just to put it in perspective, how cheap a freaking bus to a different city is. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and then they have this tour bus as well. So you do the tour bus in Budapest that you can also do in Vienna, that you can also do in Bratislava. And it's all operated by the same company and they're all different cities in different countries. So that already puts things into perspective. And if you know all this stuff, like how easy it is, you know, to uh, plan around it. Oh, so, that is lovely. Yeah. So what has been your, we've already said that Italy is like where you want to retire. What is your favorite city? That's not a good question. No, no, you must answer. I love them all. I I love them all (laughs) for different reasons. Um, 
I have three highlights. I mean, I won't speak about Italy because I feel like it has an unfair advantage because I want to retire there. So <laughs> it is out of the picture. <laughs> Sorry to the Italians. I love them. But I would say for me, Croatia as a country was one of my favorites. One of my favorite travels till this day, I speak for Croatia. I went to the Kakao waterfalls and I was just like, yo guys, this exists. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, and uh, Russia surprisingly was one of my favorites as well. And, oh, uh, side note, South Africans can go to Russia without a visa. Exactly. Breaks. So, exactly. You know. <laughs> Um, so yeah, Russia was one of my favorites. Uh, you know, Moscow is so unique mm -hmm. and it's my favorite because of just how unique it is. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do with the people. The people are a little bit cold. I'm sorry. Like I was just like, uh, uh, no, but the experience was lovely just because I've never seen Russia like that and I think the difference between what we see you know in me like on media compared to you know what you physically experience is huge and so yeah Russia would be amongst my top three and uh oof, the last one is so sad because I'm leaving other countries to choose this so some people might not like this France is one of my favorites <laughs> <laughs> Even I'm shocked. <laughs> no, not Paris, France. Okay. Um, okay. Now I feel better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I've been to a lot of cities in France and I really, really love it. I love the people outside of Paris. It's amazing. I think like anyone who experiences Paris as France, it's not a true experience of France. It's a true experience of Paris. Anything outside of France is really different from Paris. And, you know, we're talking Nice, we're talking Marseille, mm -hmm. very different experiences. And I don't know if it's the sun that makes them different, but, you know, they just, it's, it's a lovely experience. And uh, one of the reasons why France is one of my favorites is because I have a lot of family out here. Yes. And most of my travels in France would have been with a cousin, an aunt, an uncle. You know, it's just amazing. And I, I love France. Yeah. So you love France. You want to retire in Italy. But now tell us, you have been in South Africa for the majority of life. The big majority yep. of your life. So what is the thing that you miss the most about home, about your actual home? <laughs> um, I love, you know, I just love the ambiance of festive season in South Africa. Like you can feel it coming, you know, and there's a difference between festive season in Europe and festive season in South Africa. Because first of all, everyone calls December, December. We call it December. Like we already know December. it's a different, you know, it's a different month. So there's that. It's and, a whole year. <laughs> dude, like, you know, you think about your December plans from January, February. You're like, you know, it's going to be. And that is the number one thing I miss about home. It's just that vibe, you know. We just have that, you know. I know. Because, and then. Yeah. Having okay. like a, so having a December in winter does not compare to having summer in December. It just, Dude. there's no comparison. Like, I do not like it. I just want to put a disclaimer out there. I do not like this cold and rainy Decembers and Christmases. Uh, the white Christmas is nice and all, but I want the sun and I want the beach. You know what I mean? <laughs> We want to bribe, we want to be out in the pools, you know, we want our families to be there, all relaxed. This whole scarf and coats. And a rain boots and snow boots and like two pairs of socks and a pants, underpants. Mm -mm. No, <laughs> so no, South Africa is a vibe. Yeah. And you know what? I think it's just that thing. You just, 
there's that thing that just resonates with you from where you come from that nobody else understands. So when I explain the vibe to people, they'll be like, yeah, but you could also do this in the summer. And I'm like, yeah, guys, you don't get it. You just, yeah. it's okay though. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> we understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, I have said such amazing trips with, um, well, trip with Priscilla. We went to Poland together, to Gdansk. And yeah. which is a very unfamiliar place to a lot of tourists because they usually go to Krakow, Warsaw, but um, the tickets were flipping cheap. I think we paid like 50, 50 euros to go there for a return trip for the weekend. And we had such an amazing time. And then we met up in Florence last year after not seeing each other for like a whole year. And that was like so magical and so awesome. Priscilla is such a dear friend of mine. Aww. And I knew that she would bring so much energy to chats with Shawnee as well as to the experience in Dublin. And she always has good advice. She thinks logically, but with a good heart backed by it as well. So with that, I want to ask you, Priscilla, what advice would you give South Africans, your younger brothers and sisters, your younger cousins still back at home? What advice would you give them if they wanted to take the brave step and leave the country and start a journey in a new place? Whoa, like, thank you, first of all, for all those nice words. Almost got me teary here. Um, yeah, so... The thing is like, I mean, you need to be bold, you know, in your own life decisions, you know, and that's the first thing you really need to be bold. And if you want to travel, you travel like that. You do it on your own. You do it with friends. Like there's nothing that says, or you shouldn't say that there's something that's, you know, blocking you or stopping you, you know, it's all in the mind you know, and um, I mean, I'm not going to say that, you know, finances are you know, not one of the issues. It is one of the issues, but you could always save to go to a specific place. So, um, yeah, so that's one of the advices. Advice, follow your dreams, uh, follow your heart, do what you think is correct for you in the moment you are doing it. If it's not, then it's life. It's a lesson learned. And, you know, we turn the page, we move on. And that's the best advice I can give right now. Oh, thank you, Priscilla. And now you know that you have to give us a bit more personal information about yourself and your travels with our 30-second rapid questions. Are you ready for it? Oof. Yeah, I'm ready. I've been waiting. <laughs> Can you just pop the question? Um, I'm going to share my screen with you. Let me know mm -hmm. when you can see it. See it. You see it? Great. So are you ready? Ready. Okay. So I'm going to start. Favorite city in the world? Paris. Favorite foreign meal? Baguettes. The furthest you've ever traveled? I want to say Russia. Your favorite South African dish? Dumplings. Your next travel destination? Oh <laughs> no, <laughs> Switzerland. What's the, what's the first thing you'll do post COVID? I don't know. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh my word! It was a fail. <laughs> Dude, I thought I was gonna do better than that. <laughs> so, um, I'm gonna take your last answer, even though it wasn't. I don't know. <laughs> so you got six questions, which is about the average that um, <laughs> everyone has been getting. No, no. <laughs> I wish I could do this again. I failed myself. I it's, fine. it's not that bad. It's okay. It's not that bad. Yeah, no, you did well. It was six questions that you answered and you did well in them. And um, I think at least now you know what to think about too concerning where you want to travel to and what, what you're going to, the first thing you're going to do post-COVID. 
Um, thank you. Thank you so much, Fred. I value you. You know, I appreciate you so much and I love you a lot. Thank you for being on Chats with Shawnee, sharing your experiences and giving solid advice that I think will help so many of the South Africans that are either sitting in a different country and thinking about moving from that country or thinking about moving from home, which is in South Africa. So thank you. Thank you so much. I wish you all the best with your travels, future travels and where you are currently and have a blessed time with your family as well. Oh, thank you, Chanel. Thank you so much. I value you. I love you. You know, you're one of my friends. I talk so much about you. <laughs> Everybody wants to know who Chanel is. <laughs> <laughs> love you, friend. And thank you for having me. Really, it's such an honor. Um, you know, um, I hope that my experiences, you know, does speak to somebody. And uh, yeah, thanks a million. Thank you. Well, bye, everyone. And thank you for watching Chats with Shani. Bye. Hey, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Also, follow me on Instagram at Shawnal Hercules. I hope you really enjoyed this video. And if you want any more videos, please comment below. Have a great day. Bye.